Hello there and welcome to the first episode of my new gameplay series for Age of Wonders 4. You guys have been asking me to do some gameplay to the builds I create, so this is what I came up with. This build is in the making. It's a Chosen Destroyers build for the High Culture, a Golem Chosen Destroyers build. And this is going to be a mini-series of three episodes, one for the early game, one for the mid-game, one for the late game. I hope this format is pleasant for you, and let me know in the comments if you want me to revisit other builds that I've already made guides for this way, because I figured this is a way that I can transport what you want to see without bloating this up to dozens of episodes. Now, let's get started. We're playing Chosen Destroyers. That means only one city for us, and that's that. We cannot obtain new cities, so that means we cannot found any, but we get massive bonuses whenever we raise or uh, otherwise destroy cities. So that means we will be waging war as much as possible. That also means we can make really good use of the Perfectionist Artisan's trade, which makes our one city that we got way more powerful, albeit every building will be also more costly in terms of production. But who cares? If you only have one city, it's going to be one hell of a city. The big, big benefit there is we start with a tier 3 unit, which is in Brutal Difficulty, where all this is of course recorded, is a massive benefit. We're playing the Dragon Ruler here, two reasons for that. First off, I like the idea of a world-destroying dragon, and it's also a Shadow Dragon, offering us some sneaky little Shadow Affinity that this build would otherwise lack. So, let's get started and explore the world a bit. Usually, in this difficulty level, I would set out and check where I can just build my burst cities. Here, things are not working like that. We're not building any cities. We're out for blood. That means we're going to hunt monsters and we're going to recruit heroes as fast as possible. Now, I'm going to research Sundering Blades as I see this as a way more useful thing to have if we rock golems. Okay, so let's see. Over here I can already see the borders of a free city, my first victim I suppose. And, well, usually I would go north now, because I can already foresee that north of us will be nice locations to settle down at. But since we're not much about settling down, we're going to move south. And let's see if there's any mob camp that I can grab. So, training up some Light Seeker first, because I like to have scouts early on. And we're going to build the Artisan Workshop, providing production and other goodies. Usually, I start with just a regular workshop, because I like to have production income as the very first thing. As it makes us just more stable and all. Alright, Saint Spire. Mm. We're going to give them a Whispering Stone, just for now. Probably I should put the Whispering Stone into my own city, but whatever. So, I'm delaying combats a little bit, as the starting army is always a tad bit weak. You know, it's brutal difficulty, the mob camps are stupidly large, and, well, we do have a tier 3 battle mage. That is pretty nice. But I don't think that this is enough to stem a fight like this, or is it? And while it's 460, the Druid is really nasty. The rest of them are just quite easy to kill. But Druids of the cycle, I have a deep hate for these. There's a ton of tier 1 units here. Well, probably we would be able to tackle that. Probably. Probably we would be just losing units. Early on, I don't like to lose units. Later down the road, losses are something you can't avoid entirely, but well. Alright, scout number two. We're going to use that guy. Oh, look, there is an infestation. Production points. Okay, nice. So that brigand camp would have been a really nice start for us. Let's see, these guys are sitting on a pasture. So, oh well, 420, 460, we're at 415 army power. Army power is a very relative value, but it is not really something that you should totally ignore. 
All right, Artisan Workshop is being boosted by quarries. So well, let's do this. So let's build a quarry here. And as you see here, it sped up the production cycle enormously. This boosting is really powerful and it makes things cheaper and it makes things go uh, get finished faster. Now, I don't really dare to take that fight. This one is not really interesting as we don't get any rewards out of that. Because I guess Saint Spire will just grab that. Tell you what, we're going to fight for that little treasure chest in the forest. Meanwhile, we're building up our army with our first copper golem. There it goes. Alright, Sundering Blades researched. Let's see. Dormant Enchantment is, I think, a must-have. But do I need it right now? I don't think so. Spell Tempered Shields? will be amazing for this culture to pick it up right away since i'm playing a golem build we will have shield units that can utilize that spell a lot oh yeah that is just a perfect perfect fight to begin with so at the very beginning i really like to look for battles where there's not many high tier units involved high tier units are problematic as they have a lot of hp and they can burst down your units quite effectively we don't want that with a Dragon Ruler, you are also very, very powerful early on, as a Dragon packs quite a punch. So, we got our Awakeners ready. So, we're going to Awaken these uh, buddies here, and we're also going to put an Awaken in a Radiance spell on our squad, as this will awaken the entirety of the squad and power them up. But sadly, it's uh, either... No. Yeah, well, we're going to miss the, either the, the Awakeners or the Golems. Well, the Awakeners are tier 3. They matter more. So, we got a fat nuke available, and I'd say we're going to nuke around here. There we go. And speaking about fat nukes, let's go with the Dragon. And land a nice three-man breath attack. Smack down one of the skirmishers, and let's see, could eliminate these, but as a matter of fact, I prefer to soften up another target. Alright, we can kill these. Alright, bit of a risky move, as I have exposed pretty much all of my army. The back line is open to be attacked. My shields are not in defense mode, so that was kind of a greedy move. But I saw myself already pretty much in the victory um, on the winner's side, so I think we're safe to go that way. Now, well, we can take it like that. Shields take down that. Dragon attacks that. And here we take that. And the arrows are free to fire. Well, I don't take the 50 person shot. I don't like that. Bam. Crit. That's overwhelmed tactics. Love it. Alright. We soaked up some damage on the shield. I don't like the Dusk Hunter damage, but it is as it is. Hey, we gained some gold. By the way, gold, that is a brilliant moment to just snag ourselves our second hero. We got a hero that can jinx people. I, I just think that an orc with that wizard cap looks freaking ridiculous. Ah, uh, Evangeline the Dart. That is just a really nice skill. Sundering defenses. Wait, let's take that. So, this is a costy hero, extra costy extra gold per turn until we have built that uh, hero's lodge whatever we don't mind we don't care so let's move on what kind of building do i want to have i think i'm going to move on to a shrine next yeah and a dust country i want to have a second archer the archers here are not necessarily my most powerful units that i got but they are very very important for the or the damage composition of this entire squad. Now, I think with the units I got, we should be capable of taking down what we have there. So, let's go into Dragon Skills. I want to have a Tail Swipe available. Tail Swipe is amazing. Okay. One of the biggest advantages of playing evil like that is that 
I don't need to invest my Imperium into building cities or anything like that. The entire Imperium income of mine can flow directly into more stuff that develops my empire. That was really, really nice. Alright, there's another infestation sitting there, right there. Terrible, but whatever. Shriker's Tomb, yeah. The area up here, by the way, if I wouldn't be playing Chosen Destroyers, one city would go here to the uh, Bronze Wonder, and the other city would go here to the Silver Wonder. But, well, instead of building cities, we'll be destroying cities, so... I guess everybody has its purpose in life. Okay, let's see what Auto Combat would do. Auto Combat would annihilate my shield carriers. Well, I am actually not quite okay with it. Maybe I can do it better. I do like to give Auto Resolves a try, but usually I end up with re-rolling that because the Resolve sucks. <laughs> Alright, our shields are really banged up. So we need to be careful around them. Our mages are in nuking range. Well, tell you what, we're going to slack that smack down a nuke on these guys here. Bam. Just like that. And I'm going to move the dragon up front and give them a nice tail whack. The idea behind what I'm doing here is quite simple. I want to make sure that the enemy will be attacking me only from one front successfully. Let's see if my hero is capable of taking down that guy. Brilliant. So now we have already taken down two of five units. Yeah, my dragon is pretty exposed, but he's also the most powerful unit on the field, so he can take the, the punishment. If anybody of my on, on my board, he can. So let's awaken the archers. That's always a really good and smart thing. They deal a lot more damage when awakened. Playing against Industrious, I see. Alright, so let's see. Breath attack. Oh yeah, brilliant. Uh, sadly, the shields didn't freeze, so we have to manipulate our, our friends out of here. Bam. Flanking attack. We're powerful. And we're going to... Provoke a retaliation here, so retaliation attack is move is used. Hero can move away without provoking attacks. Bam. Lay the smack down. There we go. Wonderful. That went down smoothly. Now we only have to worry about the tier 4 mage of theirs, which is, in all honesty, quite a powerhouse, but, uh, well. Let's see. Mm. I want to awaken my spears. Spears are extremely good against these guys, as they have the Giant Slayer trait. There we go. Bam. Boy, oh boy, that hurts. Jeez. Okay, so... What's really a little bit of a nuisance about enemies like these is that this guy is a giant unit, and therefore he is... Only one person, that means no matter how low he goes HP-wise, his damage will always be the same. That makes these guys extremely dangerous in general. But we took it. We took it good. Alright, first thing that I want to teach one of my heroes is that Restoration Spill. It is so good to have that, and I was already quite annoyed that this one was missing the whole time. Now, let's see, what kind of province do I want to have? A vendor for the fa uh, for or farm for a vendor? Or a forest for the library. I think I'm going to go for the library here first, as research is going to be very, very important. Well, military engineering. Tell you what, this is actually really important and interesting for us, as outposts are one way for chosen destroyers to get rare resources. Because it just works. You can set an outpost on top of a rare resource, put a work camp right next to that, Boom. Done. So, I don't think that we're going to do anything for these people. And let's see. So, a Dusk Hunter is here in the making. I'm going to hurry the recruitment of that one. 
really hope that yep, it works. Now, how would I want to expand my own? Oh. This is Saint Spire Bears. Well. Ah, <sighs> the question is, do I want to destroy these guys right away? Or do I want to go north and destroy them later? I think the answer is later. So, we won't be doing that now. Simply because there is a infestation up ahead of me. And if I let that infestation go free, hi there, Mr. Mole Man, I will have quite some nuisance with that. Tell you what, we're going to auto explore these, uh, put these guys onto auto explore. Usually I do more manual exploring, but in this scenario, it didn't really pay off. Look at that. Brigand camp already spawned its first uh, menace. Whatever. Okay, we got spell tempered shields researched, so let's go for let's go for warding blessing. I want the seeker arrows quite badly, but warding blessing is pretty much a must have. I can do so much combat manipulation. With that. Why do I have war with these all of a sudden? Hey, so, what? Now I moved my army for nothing. Damn it, you guys. All right, whatever. I don't mind. I, I wanted this anyway, so let's keep going. So, we're going to set up a library here. And since we are obviously at war... I'm going to go for a, another Dusk Hunter. I don't need the Dawn Defenders that badly, as we can fill up our ranks with Copper Golems. So the Whispering Stone has been returned, so let's put it down in our own city, where it will produce stability for us. Alright. I mean, I am really more happy than anything else as this will give us quite an advantage. All in all, this is more good than anything else for me, because raising a city does make me more powerful. So they actually made me just stronger. The only thing I was a little bit annoyed about is just the fact that I've been standing in front of these really a moment ago, and then they declare war on me. Yeah, oh, well, whatever. So, dear auto combat, how would you do without magic? inacceptable yeah it's one of those builds some builds are just really good at auto resolving and some just aren't <laughs> this one obviously has quite some problems early on whatever so this is this is top notch we should be able to tackle these guys with ease all right, tier four bear is their strongest unit. So the first thing to do again is we want to awaken our archers. I do prefer archers in this build quite a lot for early awakening because they are just, uh, well, they gain a lot of range when they are awakened and they also gain a lot of damage. So, well, let's check this. This is a little bit of a problematic situation though. Let's see. There we go. Some breath attack in. I don't like the fact that the bear positioned himself so well up front of the enemy that we basically got no better target them than him. I would have preferred to uh, nuke down their fellas. So placing down my shield carriers like that so they can provide protection for everybody around them. There we go. Because these guys, they hit like a truck, eh? Yeah. So... Well, turns out that's how I lose my golem, but whatever. I don't, uh, I don't think that losing a golem unit is that much of a big deal. They are resummonable after all. And as far as I see this build, 
they are practically the best unit to lose if you have to lose a unit, that is. Ooh. Ow. Major slabs. Okay. Putting down the shields for defenses and not for attacking, so they take less damage. It's a uh, big floral stinga after all. No matter how much damage I put into it, it will be remaining the same strength. A lightning sword! Alright. Nothing uh, tremendous here, but whatever. It'll do a good job for us. Okay. So, level up for the ruler. I want the ancient governor skill right away. There we go. So, pacification, totally not interested in that. I want basic seafaring, military engineering, I hold that back as well, as it ain't that interesting as of yet. Alright, and as you see here, you can already do a lot of things just with your very, very first tome. Alright, so I'm placing down now a second farm, as the second farm is the stonemason booster. And I want that stonemason down ASAP, as my buildings are all darned costy. This will help me a lot. Okay, my copper golem will be joining us next turn. There we go. And I want to rehire another Dawn Defender. The next step that we need to take is obviously the um, Tier 2 Town Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free cities. Perfect. I mean, they are the best thing to attack early on. Okay, so here we got a six-unit stack that we can go for. Nice. Wording Blessing has been completed. So, oh no. No. Well, Dormant Enchantment is important too. I wanted another spell, I wanted the uh, Enchanted Arrows quite badly, but on the other hand, I think this way ain't bad, it ain't bad either. So, let's see. Sadly, I don't have that uh, evil skill yet. We need five more turns, damn it. Anyways, so I really am confident that we should be able to take that. It's a safe battle. Let's see. Auto resolves actually kicking it out quite good, so that's totally okay for me. There we go. Sometimes I do like to auto resolve, especially when it's such a fight like that, where it's pretty clear that you just don't have that much to to do there. So inspiring leader is to me a good early game trade. And, yeah, the infestation is sending forces, but I don't care because it's sending the forces the wrong way. <laughs> so, my income currently is a, is a miss. We are, we are weak in many, many aspects, but we are also attacking the first city right now. I am going to summon more copper golems. As I see this being one of the best investments early on, it sucks a bit that I feel not capable of getting up the second tier of the town hall that quickly, but on the other hand, we're taking down Saint Spire. Oh no. Oh god. Okay, we, we need to take that manually. It's really, really nasty that we're being ambushed by that infestation from the side, but I see it from a positive side. This also is a nice amount of XP flowing towards me, so let's take it as something positive. I have enough um, mana left over to do some spell casting too. So let's see how we can deuce this out. I just feel a little bit bad about the HP of my dragon, so let's change that. Alright, so here you have the typical situation where you have a uh, cluster of people with Battle Mage in center. That just sucks, so we're, we're going to do Bulk Awakening here, because I just don't have the capacities to do that separately everywhere. We really need those priests. And now we're going to do the Nuka. 
It would have been more effective if I would have waited for a turn where the supporters didn't go into defensive stance. But on the other hand, this way my battle mages are now able to just do a single target nuke, which will be also very, very important for us. So, step one, I think we're going to hit everybody with the dragon's breath. Oh yeah, two people frozen. That dragon breath is so effing powerful. Like overall, I think dragons are really, really massive. Dragon rulers are a huge asset. Okay, so I take two units here to take down this one cluster. I want to have my hero free for the juicy targets, you know. Stuff like that. I oh, come on. No. Whatever. So, let's heal up the spears. That's really important. Otherwise, they won't deal a lot of damage. And get back there. Finish the job. Okay. Speaking about finishing the job, we got fancy battle mages, but yeah, well. I'm gambling too much. Stop gambling and start attacking. My culture's biggest uh, benefit lies in the fact that they just have so much power right from the get go. That's one of my favorite things about these guys. Well, you got such a nasty range dominance right from the bat. It's just good. Alright, so. Mage Cannon is the last unit left. And there we go. Boom. That's been that. Alright, so we got ourselves another golem. Now, as you see here, those golems are real powerhouses for this build. And the best part about it is they transform into something even more powerful later down the road. So, we want, in this second part, so I'm not entirely sure where I want to go. Tome of Zeal is very, very appealing, for a golem build in general, very powerful. Tome of Evolution is also pretty nice for any golem build. I am not 100% sure, though, what will be the best choice here. I mean... Obviously, Tome of Evocation is also a really, really good thing to pick up. So is Tome of Warding, as it is very, very synergistic for the high culture. Tell you what, I think I'm very, very inclined to pick up Tome of Warding for this build, as we have a weakness on the golems with magical damage. And I think this might be one of the best ways to mitigate that issue. All right, it's a risky battle as there are two big heroes. So let's see what happens if I allow the usage of my magic. Oh, that's what you get here all the time. Oh, well. I mean, they are level four heroes, so that means it might be actually really out of my league. But I somehow doubt it. I think the AI has done some sport things again. Because the AI sometimes is smarter than me. It's pretty obvious that I mean the opposite now. Alright, let's see what that'll do. I mean, technically we are more than them. We shouldn't have that much of a big deal bursting through their defenses here like that. So, let's see. Awaken Inner Radiance. Oh, let's... Nuke that. There we go. So, we respawn. We, 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 get, we, give their, we give them fire back. Let's see. And... I feel like... If we can take down a couple of theirs, the same way they, uh, they are attacking us, we totally will gain something out of that. So, let's place down a shield wall. I want to provoke them to get out of there, you know. Oh, alright, they have summons. Now that's... That explains a lot why this uh, was a horrible outcome in the first place. 
Okay. Now I understand what we have, what kind of problems we had with that battle here. It might be that I am actually not capable of taking them that yet. That would be sad. Yeah, tell you what, we're we're too early here. That sucks, but we need to come back later. The problem here is quite clear. Make level four heroes and we don't. If I had the level four heroes myself, I wouldn't have any problem with that situation whatsoever. But it is as it is, so we have to accept the fact that I cannot take down Saint Spire yet. It sucks, but it is what it is. It is that it isn't so far not much of a big deal as we have gained a lot of experience out of that and we didn't lose anything most important thing is that you don't lose anything early on it would have been a very very early breach into a city and admittedly i think we were just unlucky at that usually i wouldn't have had that much of a problem with a situation like that but well can't expect two level four heroes in a starter city after all okay what we're doing instead is we're, we're going to go exploring a little bit and come back later i basically will take a tour around now oh yeah city structures cost less to build i'm gonna take a tour around and when i come back i'm going to be i'm going to destroy that city the most important part now is that I managed to get me a, another um, a tier 2 thingy here. Alright, mana for an awakening, a sun priest for a knowledge. No, well, sure thing. Whoa, that is... That is extravagant. Okay, we got two tier 3 mages. That is amazing. I mean, at the end of the day, I should be probably not too sad about the fact that we just didn't conquer the city yet. As we gained now the ability to extract knowledge out of beaten enemies. I think this is a very, very beautiful thing. Much, much better than just hanging around and doing this that early. All right, one of my starter troops just died there. Oh no, an AI wants to take down the brigand camp. Ugh, you guys suck. Did you know that? I don't like you. So Saint Spire has sent a war party. Damn it. So it turns out that somebody else is taking the uh, candy from me and I can't say and I can't do anything against that war ha they were too late ah uh, so long suckers brilliant oh that's so good mm, triumph gilded shield that's also a really good one all right your domain has been invaded. Okay, we need to get back to Arcadia ASAP, as these jerks are already knocking at our borders. But, as a matter of fact, it's pretty good that they come outside like that. Whoa, that's a pretty scary army stack. But, all in all, we are now scary too. We are level 4 ourselves, and we can now summon undead ourselves. You see, there is a lot of... Uh, we can do that now too, action going on on our end. So, let's see. Where did Twin Awakening go? They were able to learn Twin Awakening back there. Ah, they have it now automatically. This has been a, light, a, a small change on the uh, High Cultures end. So, bolstering support. You want that? And the Dragon Lord upgrade. I want the... Uh, Let's see. Do I want a second point of shadow affinity? Of course I do. Alright, so now we can go for a Comet Breath. So we now have a proper ranged attack. And let's see, my Dragon Ruler is sadly not available right now. Well, whatever. 
In Brutal Difficulty, it's pretty normal that you will get invaded early on quite regularly and all these things. It is a very, very common occurrence that you're getting plundered, pillaged, and whatnot. Yeah. That's just what I expected. As a matter of fact, it's pretty much a good occurrence, so to say, as we are totally capable of uh, defending ourselves against that. They're wasting time, so to say. Ooh, what do we get there? Omnispire calls off a war. Well, I don't care. Okay. So, by the way, this I, I'm doing uh, here an episode a little bit longer than my usual gameplays, because, you know, I wanted to document the early game accordingly, and the early game is not over yet. <laughs> okay, so, there we go. Low risk battle. Let's do an auto resolve for once. So yeah, you will you want to avoid now the losses on the copper golem sense forth because I want them to evolve. So my focus now shifts to if I can get losses down to somebody, it should be anybody except for the golems. Well, we'll see about that. It should be doable as we have by now. Or first combat summon. That is always a glorious moment, and these guys are, after all, just a small pack. Alright. So, let's see. We got ourselves a nice shadow dude. I like these. So what we're going to do is we're going to send him up front. Let's see? Oh boy. Nice. Oh yeah. We're going to set up these guys. They need to be countered as they dared to step up like that. We need to punish. If somebody goes and opens up his flank like that, we need to put or firepower up against that. Especially since the freezing here blocked now the movement of these guys. That was a very, very good roll for me. There we go. So, this army will go places the moment we have our tier 2 um, units available. Right now, well, it's been a bit late for... Uh, we've been a bit late on that end, but whatever. So here you see the entire firepower focuses on my um, shadow guy, which is a tad bit sad that we lost him just like that, but on the other end, nobody else got wounded, except for a couple of other people here that can easily take out of harm's way. So let's place down our nukes. I did delay them, by the way. So, to, I was able to make sure that I don't run, uh, run them into a supporter who is in defensive stance. Supporters increase the amount of magic resistance tremendously. Here goes the dragon. Slap. And, uh, yeah. Put up a shield wall for my fighters. I want the 90% hits. You have to be really careful with your um, with your archers as they can produce friendly fire procs. And as friendly as friendly fire might sound, it is very, very hurtful still. Okay, so most of the damage now is being funneled onto my dragon ruler. He can take the beating, that is totally okay. And the only thing died is... Uh, the only thing that has died is going to be my summon and that's how it should be we also did get it did gain some nice amount of knowledge and i think this illustrates quite well what you can do combat summons are for me always such a such a cheaty tool as you can totally funnel where the ai is supposed to go with these i don't know against a real human it wouldn't work that well but I must say, against a real human, you would still be able to dictate the way the person moves his units. Alright, there we go. No losses. That's how it's done. 
we didn't even lose uh, our province here. Right. Okay, so we got our first captured hero. And that pretty much is for me what we do in the early game. We're going to inc uh, we're going to engage into that. Oh yeah, the mole men declare war on me as well. All right. Chosen destroyers is such a wacky build. Everybody hates you. Everybody wants to kill you. So we don't want spell tempered shields here. I don't think that I want to invade into their uh, area right now either. So, magic mines for more mana. And it's pretty clear that the AI declares vicious war on me. I'm not entirely sure if this entire strategy I'm featuring in this video here will actually work or not. So, low risk battle, yet another one. There it goes. I'm going to accept that outcome, as we only lost a cheap tier 1 shield. I don't care about that. So, let's fall back here again. I'm milking these guys for experience. It's most mostly about getting a lot of combat experience together as this will help us a lot in getting ourselves ahead. Mark of Invulnerability, why not? I mean, we have already the most appealing spell out of that book, which was the one that uh, increases the physical, the magical resistance for supporting. No, we still need magical, um, the, uh, the warding staves. We still, we also have a lot of uh, unit enchantments that we need to roll. But first of all, let's recruit our first Sun Priest. The Sun Priests are, for me, the point where a real, a real turning point. So far, we weren't capable of doing much because, well, you clearly saw what, what happened there. We've been fought back way too often by just uh, not being able to heal against the nukes, but this is over now. Alright, a little bit sad that I wasn't able to nuke down my uh, enemy over here, but on the other hand, I think he, I am smarter in defending myself right now, and uh, just using the opportunity that the enemy is kind enough to fling lots of troops at me, that make my troops just stronger. I'm a little bit afraid though that I will get overrun at some point, but we'll see about that. Chosen Destroyers is just a very different game mode. It's uh, something you got to accept, I guess. Alrighty. At the same time, Arcadia is growing and is a very happy city. We're also freeing up the room for another hero, as I see this being a very, very profitable um, undertaking. Alright, so I am not willing to invest more mana right now into other projects, but I am very willing to invest gold into these supporters that I am missing. Alright, so that's a tier 1 hero battle. Ah, oh, come on, you. <laughs> I don't know. Some builds, they just are entirely incapable of avoiding losses that I totally want to avoid. This is one of them. Like, I don't want to lose my copper golems. They are supposed to evolve into bronze golems, because bronze golems are, are kick-ass. <laughs> they are just that good, you know. They are... the next level, so to say. Alright, so we put down our combat summon. Oh, nice, Banshee. So, Banshees... Banshee goes in, Banshee goes pop. Banshee now just stands there and gets whacked. But at the same time, it spreads up the enemies in a way that you can deal with them. Ah, so that's how my uh, how my spearmen died. And due to the shield carriers here, I was able to avoid the sad demise of my copper golems. Alright, let's do a squad awakening. Can totally do some extra awakenings here. Why not? It's one of the things I hate about this culture, by the way. They are so micro-heavy, it's just outright annoying. But, well, what can I do? Let's go. That wasn't the most effective one, but whatever. 
we're going to... Yeah. I'm going to put the damage on my... Uh, on my ruler. There we go. Taking down a hero on the enemy side is always a real big thing, moral-wise. It also breaks the enemy's capabilities of buffing their uh, troops. Here I just uh, take advantage of the fact that my Banshees will block their uh, supporters from acting if they just stand at the right spot. There we go. I could have also gone for a Restoration spell here for my um, Copper Golems, but I don't think I need to do this. The AI is bent uh, on destroying my uh, my my banshee that which will despawn anyways this next turn so that's okay go crazy all right so let's finish them off like that and I do like to see how much uh, punch my uh, my little golems already uh, pack so these guys look like an elusive species to me. As you can see, we don't exceed the 50% mark with the ranged attacks. That's okay, though. 5%. Well, whatever. It's just a scout left, so... It's not really... There's not gonna be uh, happening anything. That's one brave scout unit, though, gotta say. As a reward, they'll get eaten by the dragon. Huzzah. Okay, so we gained a Astral Heart item, nice. And we cannot gain either Imperium, City Stability, Alignment, or Experience. I'll take the Experience, thank you. Experience is a really, really, really valuable resource. So let's kick up the Ancient Governor more, as this is one of the more important things, in my humble opinion. And Let's teach our Dragon Restore. I also think that the Estral Heart is amazing to have, as it will make us harder to kill. Good. So, I'm going to go and teach Experienced Leader, as I see this as one of the more powerful traits for the, a, a Golem build in general. Okay, so I think my early game will now consist out of milking the enemy around me, I hope that the yellow player will be kind enough to send his armies soon too. Yeah, they do. And, well, we'll see how the situation evolves in the next episode, my good friends. We're going to go, I think, out of here with that one. I will consider... Wait a sec. Ah, oh, yeah, he has staves of warding. I don't know if I should do another episode here or not. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. But I really do enjoy. I think mid-game will be the tier 2 to tier 3 area. Tomes, I mean. And, yeah. So I'll be playing that ahead a little bit. And I'll be wrapping my head around what kind of tomes I want to pick. So far, I am quite confident with what we got here. This is, after all, a quality build. We should try to pick up ourselves some uh, some, some archers here, too, as I find that my, my baseline archers are just not kicking it. At the end of the day, there must be something more powerful. But I am already quite happy with where we're at, and yeah. Let me know in the comment section how you guys like that new format, like uh, the whole gameplay demonstration and such. And yeah, I'll be finishing off these guys in between. I don't think that this battle will be much different from the ones we've had before. And I hope you guys will be joining me the next time. So leave a thumbs up if you'd be so kind. I'd be very, very delighted consider subscribing. I would be also very happy if you'd be checking out Patreon, Paypal, or buy me a coffee. I am very grateful for all of you who already did, and see you all in the next episode when we will conquer war. Have a good one.